We are rolling. Welcome oh. back to Digibros. Hi. It's going. Oh yeah, it's, it's Thanks. on. Thanks, I didn't it's realize. It's on like <laughs> a Kong of Donkey Kong. The a, Donkey Kong. A, a bongo drum? Where did that start? Where the fuck did it's on like Donkey Kong come from? Because it doesn't make any sense and it's fucking stupid and gay and retarded and shitty. Um, uh, but it's on like Donkey Kong, brother. Ask somebody who knows about memes. They could tell you. A memeologist. How do I shoot the bow? There we go. Ah, uh, this game has so many controls. You gotta <laughs> use like all the buttons. Too many buttons. There's too many fucking buttons, man. <laughs> We're doing it. We're going to Polygon Dwana Land. Oh my fucking god. It's stuck in my head. The whole album is stuck in my head all at once. Guys, there's another, another new King Gizzard in the Lizard Wizard album. Hope hasn't heard it enough times to like it yet. Uh, understandable, because it's uh, progressive. Oh, yeah. I um, mean, it's for people with superior tastes. So. Yes. Well, it's, it's the kind of thing where, like, it, it takes more than one listen to, like, to, to parse it. Parse. To, to Before you kind of get it's like, what, what's like happening. It's like speaking a foreign language. You gotta yeah. parse it. But it's, it's, it's fucking dense. And it takes some getting used to. Because it's uh, wacky. Kind of like living with Victor. Yes, exactly. You like living with Victor. It's just like <laughs> living with It's dense, and it takes some getting used to. Yes. But then, you love it after you get used to it. <laughs> after you realize what's up and what's going on and what the deal is. You're like, yeah. Yeah, I can fuck with this. I'm all about it. <laughs> this, I was born for this shit. Go. Is that right? <laughs> yes. So anyways, guys, there's a new King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Liz King, King Gizzard Wizard and the Lizard Wizard album, and I'm dead. And also Victor died. And it's really fucking good. And it's like a proggy concept album, and it's like King Crimson, but it's like better than King Crimson. And it's fucking dope, and I love it a lot. And I've been listening to it fucking on repeat for days, and it's stuck in my head. Check it out on Bandcamp. It's free. Uh, listen to it while you... It's a you, free uh, album. Listen to it while you still can before uh, net neutrality is pulled out from under our feet and we there all die. Go. Download that shit now before it's gone. Before they uh, yeah, destroy all uh, independent artists on the internet. Yeah. Fucking net neutrality. Do you... Are you, like, outraged and uh, terrified? I'm pissed. Are you, like, gonna cry? I'm pissed because it means I'm gonna be paying more money than I'm paying right now. Probably. For sure. Even though I'm not even that sure. Because we don't really use that much internet. Yeah, but that's not like, going to matter. I, I, I don't feel like at the bottom of the totem pole our stuff will change very much. I feel like it's mostly going to affect people who download tons of shit and like gamers and stuff. And then to that extent, I'm not even sure. Because like Netflix isn't going to change at all, you know? Like the, the big stuff that we use every day isn't going to change at all and there won't be a fucking blip. It'll mostly affect, like, small-time shit, you know? Yeah, but the problem is that, especially, you know, in most places you have a choice between one or two ISPs, and in our case, we only have one ISP to choose from. Yeah. So this is gonna make it, they're basically have, they have more of a monopoly than ever, and they can charge you whatever the fuck they want. Cox yeah. has already been raising our rates every year without telling us anyway, so. It's I mean, just yeah, but worse. they've already been doing that, so, like, I don't know but that it's that's gonna, gonna, gonna get change worse. that much. Like, I, I mean, know. it's not going to be immediate, but over time, I'm pretty... I mean, I definitely believe it'll happen. Yeah. We'll see. We will see. We'll see. We'll all see. We'll see. Uh, we will see. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the internet. Net neutrality. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be upset when it happens and I everything think goes to the, shit. Uh, the most egregious thing about net neutrality being repealed is the fact that it was repealed by uh, people who we did not elect and we had no say in what happened. Yeah. It was uh, some fucking dipshit Trump appointed and he just did what he wanted because he used to be the chairman or whatever of Verizon yeah. and he just uh, did what was in his interests and uh, there was nothing we could do about it because we don't elect the people who are in the FCC. That's the news. Hashtag, um... <laughs> 
uh, democracy is the the best in the world, right? Yeah. Yeah, we would have just elected some asshole. Democracy anyways. is flawless. <laughs> he yeah, would have been the only least, fucking guy running. <laughs> at least if 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 that was the case, we would have elected that asshole. We didn't even elect yeah. this one. Well, we didn't elect Trump. <laughs> Well, technically, <laughs> you know, like as, a, as a country, we did. So, well, you know. Uh, Trump lost the popular vote, so we didn't elect Trump as a country. There was at least a, an <gasps> election. <laughs> there was no election for this. We yeah. didn't get a choice. It was just uh, a bunch of closed-door fucking idiots got to choose what happened. Yeah. And that's uh, the thing that's the most... Irritating. That's the name of the game, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. Look at these fucking bees, man. Bees are all up in his ass. They're gonna get in my ass now that I killed all those guys. <laughs> Better Can run. I skip the place. Yeah. Somehow I like went around the, the the thing where I have to go. Unless that's no. It's huh. I don't think that's the place. Uh. Yeah. I think I went around the place. Right. Okay. You've seen me do this before. I'm sure I probably have. Ah, uh, God. We're playing Zelda. Oh, yeah! Skelly Boys! Uh, comment below if you think that we'll actually get through Zelda or if we'll give up and start playing Neo. <laughs> hey, uh, there's nothing wrong with knowing when to, to stop. Also, remember to comment whether or not you want us to get all of the shrines or if you want us to just breeze through the main quest. <laughs> you, know, I'll, you know, I'll let you d determine that by watching me do this and see how long it takes to even get out of this fucking place. We've already been going for 30 minutes. I've only gotten one of the shrines. Even on the live stream, we, it only took us like 45 minutes <laughs> to yeah. an hour or something. Uh, right? It, it, was, a, like it was about an hour, I yeah. believe, if I remember. It's going to take us longer than that this time, and I'm not even fucking doing everything. We're just that ah. good at Zelda. I think I played it more freshly before. I want my oh, Nintendo Switch fuck. shirt! Oh yeah, the Switch shirt. Yeah! God, the fucking Woo! Switch shirt. I can fucking buttons, man. There's so many buttons. God. How do you play this fucking game? Ah! This is how the pros play. Anywho, uh, let's uh, address the the large uh, mam mammal in no, the room. That's... Okay. It's a mammal. Elephants are mammals. I mean, if you want to be specific, they're pachyderms. What the fuck's a pachyderm? It's a, that's an elephant. Is that just the name for elephants? It's not like a, a, a classification of guys? I mean, it guys? is a classification. Well, what's the classification? It's the pachyderm! What is, well, what's a pachyderm? <laughs> it's an elephant! Is it just an elephant? Or is it like a bunch of different guys? Is it like also like anteaters? Like snout what guys or whatever? What the fuck? No! Like, what's a pachyderm? Aren't pachyderms? What the fuck's a pachyderm? Pachyderm, it's got to do with how tough their skin are. Whatever, it doesn't uh -huh. matter. Oh, like a rhino? You know what? A rhino it might have something is to do with it. I don't, I don't know enough about it. Is that a Pac-Man? I don't do pachyderm a, a derm medicine. A pack? Is it because their derm is all packed in and derm is like skin? Oh, so you're so like smart. Packed in derm. It's go. like a pack of derms. Look at him go, guys. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> Uh, anyway, what, we're we're addressing the wombat in the room. Ah, uh, yes, the wombat. The, the you should really get him out of here. Anyways, I did a movie. Victor was, I was working was, on a movie. He worked on a movie. I worked on it. Yeah. I was How'd a driver. That go? Um, it was great. It was pretty good. It was a lot better than the last movie. Everyone, <laughs> the last movie was a nightmare. I came away from it feeling quite bad. Uh, this one, I feel pretty good. I feel like, yeah, I can do more movies. I'm a good boy. I can do a good a good boy's job and do the thing. And it was pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, I got to hang out with Jim Gaffigan. It was a movie about Jim Gaffigan. He was the main guy. I can't talk about the plot, but I can talk about the fact that it was Jim Gaffigan and that he was a cool dude. <laughs> I don't want to say so too much about it. So it was him. like Driving Miss Daisy, but... Miss yes. Daisy was Jim Gaffigan. Yes, Miss Daisy was Jim Gaffigan. I've okay. never seen that, but I trust that it is a good reference. <laughs> um, I've driving, never seen the movie. Uh, driving around old people. It was like something. Baby Driver, but you were Baby. Yeah. Look at these fucking millennials making references to shit they haven't seen. <laughs> I've seen Baby Driver. No, the baby, whatever, old lady or whatever. <laughs> it's Driving Miss Daisy. Driving Miss Baby. Driving lady. Miss Baby Driver. <laughs> uh, fuck. <laughs> I'm Jesus mentally exhausted Christ. from three weeks of <laughs> working 14-hour shifts uh, every fucking day. 
Oh, man. But yeah, I did a movie. I was a PA and a driver. So basically, I just handled all the shit. Kept... Held, held shit down. Did I did a lot more than what I was responsible for, and so I had a lot of fun. Cause I apply myself. There's a whole there's a whole story and an idea here, but it's unstructured. It's floating around in my head. Something about work ethic and like getting getting out of it what you put into it. But I don't have a, a structure for this at all. So I'm gonna <laughs> gonna flounder. I'm gonna get on it. Where do I start? You know, where where do where do uh, I even begin? You were you you were uh, talking about the uh, the was, interns who were just kind of uh, hanging out, waiting around. Oh yeah, there's interns. All right, so the the way this movie worked was that it was it was through ODU, the you know, old old Dominion University where I went to school, and like. They, they, they did it. There's the guy who was the director, and then, like, there's friends with the other guy, <laughs> the dude. Yeah? Does film program, and they were like, let's make the movie, and we'll have... They did two classes, and then the classes were interns on the movie. So there's, like, a fucking... Ad, there's, like, fucking 20 student interns on this fucking film, and they all had different things to do. It was a pain in the ass, because students are, suck. And our yes. assholes. But, like, the different things they, they, they were able to do were, like, they could be a production assistant, which is what I was. They could be on um, camera crew, which those guys probably had the most fun because, or at least did the most work and got the most value out of the experience. Because everyone, basically everyone wanted to be on camera, but, like, obviously <laughs> the people who w were, like... The hardest workers were put in the better positions from the beginning and, like, ended up staying there the whole time. Yeah. Because they were supposed to switch off, like, every week, everyone was supposed to switch positions. But then the the, the professionals who were actually working this thing... So it was, like, the, it was, the movie was run by professionals in the camera departments and everything. Like, all the important positions were filled by actual working professionals who know what the fuck they're doing. Right. And then we had the student interns basically just helping them out. What am I... This is not supposed to be hard. Uh, what am I doing with this ball? I think you can just go talk to the guy. <laughs> yeah. So what's, what's the ball? Oh, oh it was just supposed to demonstrate that I could shoot a, a, a thing over. What's like the ball? Like, you're supposed to look, at, Victor, look at that and be like, oh, you can shoot things. And then you're supposed to take the ball over and not do anything with it. And, uh, there's <laughs> I've got the ball. Bye. Look who dropped the ball now. Oh. It was me. It was yeah, it was you. Um God damn it. You were talking about this responsibility. Game, why is this game so hard? Anyways. So the people who were obviously the best, like, got the better positions. Right. So the positions that nobody wanted to do were production assistant, which is what I was doing. And crafty, which is basically, it's craft service. They basically, they just have to buy snacks and food and have them on set for people to eat. You know, yeah. coffee ready all the time and stuff like that. They're just manning a, a, a food table. And that's all they do. You're, yeah, it you're should the lunch be ridiculously lady. easy. Yeah, you're the lunch lady. So nobody wants to do that. Because you basically have to be there the whole time. And you don't get to, like, actually see the movie and, like, what's going on. What the fuck? Oh, the star. The fucking star keeps falling off. It scared the shit out of me. Yeah, it freaked me out a little bit. Fucking scared the shit out of me. The star fell off of our Christmas tree, guys. I don't know if that's a bad sign. Maybe. Sounds like I put it on there pretty decently. Fuck, man. What is with this game? It's, like, impossible to play. I'm trying to I'm just zoning out, trying to tell the story. I don't know where I'm going with this shit. Anyways, you were talking about craft services you know, being a lunch yeah. lady. And then it's like... It was frustrating. Cause the entire, like, the biggest set drama, like, the biggest source of conflict and frustration was the craft service people not doing their fucking job because nobody wanted to do it. And so, like, they would either just bail or they would just sit there and do nothing. I love yeah. that people would do that. People would yeah. either just do People out would or rather do nothing, do nothing than like, just do an easy job. What the fuck is wrong with you? You have something that you're supposed to be here doing and you're just gonna be like, eh, I don't want yeah. to. And the thing is, like, I understand this job sucks. But like, and your life. your your skills are probably being wasted. That's probably how you feel. Like, it, I I bet you feel like shit. Like, how do you 
how do you think I feel? I wanted to be on camera. I have the credentials that I should have been one of the head camera people on this film. And I could have been, you know? Yeah. Like, I was but there. But you're driving the and van. Like, and fucking the producer of the movie kept trying to get me on the camera team. And, like, it just wasn't happening for some reason. I think there was just miscommunication somewhere. Because, like, the guy who was the head of the camera team was like, yeah, I, I I want you to be on, and I've, like, asked them to put you on, but, like, it's not happening. And the producer's like, yeah, I keep trying to, like, get you on there. And he kept saying, like, oh, tomorrow you're going to be on camera. Tomorrow you're going to be on camera. And then I show up, and they, like, they had another guy they were hiring to do the second camera stuff. And, like, he was there every day. So I was like, I'm not on camera, clearly. They keep hiring this guy. And it just yeah. kept happening. So, like, I never really got to do it except for, like, one or two days. And then, like, I got to do third camera stuff. Even though I could have completely done it, like, I, I was more than capable of doing it. Right, and more than yeah. skilled enough to do it. But I had to be the driver. And so, like, I didn't fucking, like, there's my buddy, who I'm not, not gonna name or anything, but he was the other driver. Because both of us are both, you know, graduated, and, like, we, we know how to do camera stuff, and that's what we want to do. And, like, we, we were both basically... It's almost like a fucking pity hire because we're friends with the director, you know? Yeah. And, like, we're... I, I just wanted to fit in wherever I could because it's, like, the only thing that sucks more than being a driver is not doing anything on the film because then you're going to be watching everyone else posting pictures and stuff and being like, well, fuck, I want to be there, you know? I'm sitting at home doing fucking nothing while everyone else is working on the actual movie and fucking hanging out with Jim Gaffigan. Right. So, I don't... You know, I don't mind being a driver in the end. I'm still getting paid, you know? I, I thought I wasn't going to get paid much at the beginning, too. And then it's like, all right, well, I'm making, like, minimum wage. That's good enough for me, you know? It's still more money every day than I normally make, like, not working every day. So it was fine. But my other buddy doing the same job. Like, at first he was cool. But one of the, one of the other giant problems that we had is that everyone is supposed to be on a walkie-talkie so that you can communicate because, like, we're on a big set and, like, we get spread out. And so, like, you have to be on a walkie or you can't talk to anyone unless yeah. you're standing right next to them, you know? Yeah. And so if someone needs something done, they'll call to it on the walkie and then whoever's in the most convenient location will be like, I got this, you know? So the biggest problem people were having were like, there were people who were PAs, which is what I was doing. First of all, I was just a driver. I didn't have to do anything other than drive if I didn't want to, you know? Right. Like, I could have just been like, oh, I'm just driving. And that's kind of what my buddy did where he was just like, he lost his walkie in, like, the first week because we needed it for someone else. And so he was just kind of, like, totally bitter about it and just like, well, well, fuck, you know, fuck doing anything. I'm just going to, like, just be the driver and just, like, sit around in the van and, like, wait around, basically. And then he, he basically spent most of the time fucking chatting up people and fucking just doing the uh, schmoozing, you know? He's a great talker, great schmoozer, so he stood around most of the time schmoozing, and it's like, we could have used him if he'd stuck around, but, like, because he was just kind of like, eh, you know, if, if you're not going to give me a walkie, then uh, clearly you don't value my presence here, so I'm just going to, like, fuck around and, and do whatever. So, like, we still use him for driving, but once he was, without driving, he was kind of useless, you know? Right. So he was never around. Or it's like, even there were days where I lost my walkie, and I just stood right next to whoever would need me. Because that's, if you want someone to use you, you just stand next to them until they need you, you know? Right. You don't go fuck off, because it's like, what am I going to come find you to, like, yeah, give you a task? Yeah, they're not like, this person isn't going to go out of their way to find you later yeah. on. So, like, the people who were supposed to be PAs ended up bored of shit, sitting around, doing nothing, and, like... I could have given them things to do as one of the, the leader PAs, you know, but I didn't even know who was on our team because they were never fucking around. And then, like, the last week, I didn't even realize they were students who were supposed to be helping us out until the last week, and I told them, like, if you want to be able to help, just stand close to me, and I will be able to tell you what to do. Like, don't go wander away, and sure enough, they ended up wandering away anyways, because yeah. this is what happens. Because that's what they're, yeah. And people get bored. So kids are gonna they aren't do doing it. enough. Yeah, and it's like, uh, you don't get it. Like you, you, you're, you're gonna get the most out of it if you put more into it. You know, like no one told me I had to do any of this stuff, but I'm having the most fun because I'm around and I'm paying attention. And that's something I learned doing camera stuff. 
after fucking up on that other movie, because it's like, I realized that they weren't going to tell me what I need to be doing. I have to figure out what I'm supposed to do, you know, as like, you have to kind of lead yourself. And that's just how those guys worked. So I had to be around constantly and listening not only to what they're saying, but listening to what the directors are saying and stuff. So I know the next thing that's coming before anyone has to tell me. Yeah. And like, I didn't, I feel, I almost feel like I could have explained that to the kids and stuff and been like, given them more advice. But then it's, it's, if people aren't going to fucking take the time to like apply themselves and it's like, why, why would I even bother yeah, with you? <laughs> like, fuck them? off. Like clearly you just, you're just not giving a shit. And, like, I can tell you this, but you're just, it's not going to make them do it, you know? So I had a great time, even though I didn't, you know, need to do more stuff. I just did as much as I possibly could, because I didn't want to be standing around. Yeah. Standing around sucks. You feel like a useless asshole. And then, in inevitably, people are going to get pissed at you, because, like, the moment they need you're you, you're not going to be there, and they're going to be like, oh, well, you're not fucking doing anything, you know? They're just going to be like, oh, well, he was a lazy dick the whole time. <laughs> Fucking people got attitudes, man. It was annoying as shit. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, people People are gonna get attitude regardless. Yeah. People who, uh... The fucking yeah. craft service people were so fucking retarded. It was so frustrating to get them to do anything. And then when they did do something, they'd fuck it up in a retarded way. Or it's just like, how is this stuff not intuitive to, like, go buy snacks and... Uh, frustrating... We'd be out of water bottles. And then, like, we put my my friend who was the other driver, we ended up making him in charge of the crafty people because he wasn't doing anything, you know? And all he was doing was driving. So it's like, okay, will you be in charge of these guys and make them get their shit together? And then, like, it was still fucking up. And it's like, where do you... Like, if you can't do this right... Why would we hire you to do anything else? Like, now that I've seen him not give a shit in that position, why would I hire him in the future, you know? Right. It makes it difficult. Where it's like, because you, if you, you have to show 100%. Small. Yeah. No matter what you're doing, you have to act like you really give a shit if you want to be given a bigger task. Like, if you can't handle a small task, why do they give you a bigger task? So I just tried to be... Like, everyone was, was constantly, like, praising me throughout the entire thing, which I don't know how seriously to take any of it, because that's how I am. But, like, everyone really appreciated me, because I never complained. I always was upbeat and chipper, and just, like, people would be like, Hey, Victor, can you do this? And I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> like, of course. Not, I never gave anyone any attitude. And by the end, I felt pretty good, and I feel like there's some people who would hire me again, you know? Maybe they'll think of me again when they think if they need more people. I was really nice to the camera guys, even though they kept, you know, button me out and not letting me help out. But, like, I got to help out enough where I was just like, oh, yeah, thank you. And I'd be like, yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm here, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not a bitter dickhead. Like, that's all I want to do is, is convey that I am not a lazy asshole and that I have a good work ethic. That's all that matters. And hopefully, you know, the... The first assistant director guy asked me if I'd go on the next movie with him as a PA, and I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll do it. Even though the, being a PA is not my passion, but I get to learn more stuff, but, you know? Uh, like baby steps, you know? You gotta yeah, take those steps, steps in the right direction. I'll work up. And, like, the the guy who was the, the DP on that, you know, the cinematographer, like, he got to start as a as an assistant director. And, like, he did that professionally first, you know? So he probably started as a PA, worked up to that, decided he was done doing that, and he probably had enough money to buy whatever the fuck he wants. So, like, he moved on to being a cinematographer from that. And, like, the more I'm on sets, the more, like... I took tons of pictures of this guy's lighting setups and stuff and, like, just learned and absorbed because I was there, even though I wasn't on camera. Not being on camera gave me more time to check out everything yeah, else. Yeah, then you can yeah. see what's going on. So now it's like I have a better understanding of how a giant movie works, you know, even more than what I got when I was uh, working on one before. That's right, I gotta make the, I gotta make spicy food so that I can withstand the cold. I go over to the pot. I go to the pot and I cook it. Gotta cook that boy. First I gotta, I gotta cut down a tree and get wood. Man. Yeah. Gotta go through all this effort just yeah. to make some food. Yeah, yeah. Man. It's
It's survival. God, this is the worst game. <laughs> I don't know how this is so difficult to let's play. Worst game 2017. Yes. Zelda Breath of the Wild is the worst game of 2017. When you put it next to games like, uh... Uh... I guess Mario? What else is good? Uh, Sonic Forces? Oh, that's true. I mean, that was an instant classic that everyone loved. Yeah. I mean, 10 out of 10, so... Uh, no competition. Uh, it's Hollow Knight. Didn't beat that because it's too fucking long and hard. Uh, too tedious for me. Um, God, dude, there's so many fucking buttons. God, God, but, but, but uh, uh, this didn't bother me the first time. Uh, <laughs> All right. Can make spicy apples. Yeah, spicy apples. There's apples and they're spicy. Simmered fruit. Spicy, there's not, there's simmered fruit, fruit is different. It's just apples. God. Yeah, but apples are fruit, so. It's fine. You were right. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's my work ethic rant. Everyone, just do a fucking good job, no matter where you are. Don't be a fucking dick. Like I feel like I made that mistake before in like college, just kind of being pretentious, and then like not taking unpaid internships, which is a fucking mistake. If you have the opportunity to do any internship anywhere, fucking take it, because that's how you get a job. That's how you get hired. Go work for free and fucking do the best job you can and suck it up. If you want to get fucking hired somewhere. Because why should anyone hire you if you can't do basic shit? Like, if you can't handle the, the simplest tasks, why the fuck would they trust you to do anything bigger than that? That should be the, the biggest moral in your fucking life. Biggest lesson to learn. You gotta earn it. You gotta earn that shit. Alright. We're going to the place there. We need a, a leaf. A leaf? A leaf. There's a leaf over here. Leaf. Yeah. I've played this game. Victor knows how to play this game. Yeah. I got the leaf. And there's a, a dead skelly man. A dead boy. I, get, I got a gear. The Gear Wars. The Gear Wars. I ended up watching a bunch of Rick and Morty season two yesterday. Because oh. I, I had left it on when you were leaving. And then I was just laying on the couch and I was like, eh, Rick and Morty. So you just sat there and watched Rick and Morty <laughs> I while I was working? And then I took a nap, yeah. You took a nap. Or maybe I took a nap nice. during Rick and Morty and then woke up to it and just kept watching it. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, season two is pretty good, huh? It's pretty good. Yeah, season two is pretty good. Yeah. It's better on rewatches. So I, I, we gotta rewatch season three and see if that's, you know, better than the first watch. Season three, the expectations were so high for everyone that just, like, nobody liked it. Motherfucker. Oh, that didn't work out very Can't swim well. in the fucking water. Doesn't matter how many fucking spicy apples you eat, goddammit. You should have got the treasure chest out of there. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many spicy apples you Oh, eat. Zelda. I'm so sick of doing this fucking Great Plateau, but you have to fucking do it every time. It's like the most boring part of the fucking game. Anyways, uh, how do you feel about work ethic or something? Uh, I mean, it's more or less the same for me. I started out, uh, just cleaning kennels and shit. Yeah. All I did was uh, clean kennels and pick up dog shit and spray down fucking kennels and, uh... It sucked. It wasn't, like, super fun, but, uh, it's what you gotta do if you wanna move up in, uh, in the veterinary world. You start out cleaning up shitty kennels. Yep. And then you go from there. You gotta, you gotta earn it. You don't yeah. just get to show it. up and, and start, you know, doing the big shit. Yeah. You gotta clean People will be like, first. oh, I wanna be a director, and then they can't even fucking order food for people like what is wrong with you what what makes you think you can ever be trusted with the responsibility of fucking running a crew if you can't even pay attention and do nothing like give me a fucking break you can't even boil a fucking pot of coffee why would we ever trust you to make a film it's insane some people uh, just think that people should uh should trust them and let them do what they want to do and that's yeah. not how the world works and, like, at first, I didn't want to be a driver. I almost didn't do it, because I was just like, oh, this feels like a waste of time. And then I was just kind of like, wait a oh, minute, what am, I, what am I talking about? Why do I deserve to be anything better than a driver, you know? Just because I worked on one movie where I was a fucking camera assistant. And it's like, anything, working on a movie on any capacity is worthwhile. 
if you make good impressions on people. Gotta, gotta get them connections. Good. I feel like that was the best fucking crew ever, and it'll never be that happy again. <laughs> they were just, it was just the coolest bunch of people together. It's like everyone knew each other. It was super cool. It was a fun time. Made them connections. Making that paper. Got that Monopoly money? Yes, I got that Monopoly money. Now I hopefully we'll get to work on another movie. That should be cool. In February. That'll be dope. And I just gotta fucking kill time and make uh, little bits of bread here and there until then. I could fucking just write it out. Like, I've got enough money right now that I can do nothing until February and then work on that film and be fine. Uh, but that's not an optimal not way to... God happen. fucking damn it! The controls of this fucking game are so frustrating right now! Why can't I just swim onto the fucking rock and then, like, uh, be on there? God! Yeah, there's gonna be so much flack Fuck my about, fucking ass. ...about this. Ugh. The flack is coming, I can smell it. Fuck, I'm just gonna go around... I don't even have to go this way. It's just like the fastest way to do it. If you don't die a million fucking times for the most retarded shit, let's go this way. Fuck it. Got enough fucking apples. God. Fuck. <laughs> ah! This plane's Wonderful. game forever. Alright, we can't do every shrine. It's gonna take forever. I just wanna get to the DLC. Stropple in the description. Oh, man. How deep are we in this episode? Uh, Maybe if we just do one shrine per episode, then we could do 100 huh. episodes. Yeah. And then we'll be good. We're, we're 31 minutes in. Oh my god. Oh my god, we're gonna do one shrine per episode. Alright, you guys! <gasps> we're gonna do one shrine per episode! It's time for a 1,000 hour shrine 100% uh, let's play! There you go, they couldn't have put dungeons in this fucking game. It would never end. Fuck, man. I gotta focus. Yeet. I gotta afford focus. I hope any of that rant about whatever was comprehensible. I don't know. It's hard. I wasn't prepared. Uh.